while most people dread the cold of winter, so I live in Michigan, right? And what you're gonna, what you start to hear around fall as the temperatures start to drop, it's oh no, we're getting into winter, right? <clears throat> we're gonna, it's gonna get cold, it's gonna get dark. Um, I just want to hunker down is what you're going to hear a lot. I just want to hunker down and hibernate. Um, I hate the cold. People say, I hate the cold. I hate the snow. And I want you to experience something different when you, when it, when the word cold pops into your brain. And literally, I want you to think about how cold can improve and support your brain and your brain health. And so when we experience appropriate cold exposures, I'm not talking about needing to do a 30 minute cold plunge. I'm not talking about needing to be outside for six to eight hours, right? In the cold. I'm talking about appropriate cold exposures. When we experience those cold exposures, um, the, there's actually certain chemicals that get produced in the brain. And so this is one of my favorite things to do as I start to prep for winter is to understand how to give my body appropriate cold exposures, knowing that I'm not only preparing my body to adapt and better physiologically be able to handle the winter months with healing benefits, but also at the same time, all the brain boosting benefits that I get as I'm doing these cold exposures. So first and foremost, um, when we expose our bodies to cold, the brain, the brain actually starts to produce between 200 to 500% more norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is essentially a neurochemical that when it gets released, it allows the body to, or the brain to maintain adequate amounts of focus, adequate amounts of concentration, right? And so I know then that norepinephrine leads to my ability for me to sustain focus and um, really get tasks accomplished. So I love to stack cold exposures right before I, I I need to work on something or focus or read something that I think is going to require some 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 challenge a little bit of challenge or um, just extended concentration, and so the ability for my brain to handle those types of sessions, those work sessions, are, are it's tremendously boost because of the fact that that cold exposure is increasing that norepinephrine in my brain. I, some people also might feel both increased energy, but that increased energy doesn't feel like, oh no, you know, like, like anxiety, that increased energy actually leads to a um, more amplified effect with the work that one is doing. So we get better focus, better, uh, better concentration with energy after controlled cold exposures. Now, what else can we get? Well, when we expose our brain to the cold, we can actually um, improve mitochondrial health. So the brain is a very dense, has a ton of mitochondria, right? The only cells in our body that have more mitochondria would be the oocytes, right? Would be the egg cells. They require a ton of energy in order to help grow, uh, to help develop a growing baby. And so what we now, what we, what we know is that the brain is chock full of mitochondria. We're talking thousands upon thousands of mitochondria per cell per cell. Um, and so those mitochondria, actually, if you're starting to notice symptoms and signs of things like brain fog, cognitive decline, perhaps those mitochondria aren't making adequate amounts of energy for your brain. And guess what? The body can, can clear out damaging mitochondria, damaged mitochondria through a process called mitophagy and create new mitochondria for, for your brain that will function as good as new in a process called mitochondrial biogenesis. And so when we are exposed our body to the cold, we activate a pathway in our body, not just our brain, but for mitochondria everywhere um, that, that works through a um, chemical called or a pathway called PGC1-alpha. PGC1-alpha is essentially a gene that turns on mitochondrial biogenesis, tells the body to make new mitochondria. So this means that the mitochondria become better able to generate energy for us in the brain and in our body, resulting in essentially uh, higher cognition, more energy, better aerobic capacity even. And so this is just controlled cold exposures. Now, something else that we get um, as we expose ourselves to the cold, let's go back to that norepinephrine. When that norepinephrine is produced, it lowers the it lowers an inflammatory cytokine cascade uh, that starts with a chemical called TNF-alpha. TNF-alpha is like a major inflammatory chemical that when it's increased, it can, it, it just creates this chronic, it can, it can perpetuate these chronic inflammatory cascades in the body and in the brain. And so if we can use norepinephrine, if we can optimize norepinephrine signaling, we can actually lower TNF-alpha, lower those chronic inflammatory cascades and those cytokines. Uh, another chemical that actually gets released in the brain in response to cold exposure is something called BDNF. 
BDNF stands for brain derived neurotrophic factor. Um, one of my one of my teachers in grad school called it like miracle growth for the brain, meaning that it can actually help to improve how our neurons are actually interacting with each other. So this has this has ramifications for things like memory and learning. So what, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that what BDNF does is, is it allows, essentially encourages the, neuro, the, ro, the neuronal connections that we have. It encourages them to get stronger if necessary, but it prunes what's unnecessary. So what do I mean by that? I mean that all day long, I'm taking in information and I'm trying to encode that information by connecting neurons together, right? I'm creating these neural networks. So for example, today, just today, right? Uh, I read, I started reading a book on magnesium and I also went on a walk, right? And so the, what I would wanna do is as I was reading that book on magnesium, I was learning some very interesting things. And so the neurons in my brain are essentially organizing themselves to help me remember what I learned in that book. Now, when I went on that walk, my brain was still working. But what my brain was working on was, um, you know, it saw cars driving by, it heard dogs barking, it heard, it saw people mowing their yards, right? And it was encoding that information as well. It was creating neuro neuronal connections with that information as well. But that information would be unnecessary for me to have a strong recall of. I don't need to remember the color of the car that drove by me on my walk. I do want to recall that information on magnesium because I've got several clients who I think could benefit from it. And so when we expose our body to controlled appropriate cold exposures, we increase this chemical, this BDNF in the brain. And what that does is it strengthens the important neuronal connections and prunes the unnecessary one, ones, meaning I'm not gonna waste energetic capacity trying to maintain these neuronal connections. And instead I can pull, I can disconnect from those and put energy towards the ones that are more important for me to remember. This was, this would be um, called things like synaptic plasticity, plasticity, or just pruning our neural networks. And so that means that I can actually have better memory and better learning capabilities when I do appropriate cold exposures. Something else that BDNF does in the brain is BDNF actually makes a brain that's more stress resilient, meaning when we get um, spikes in cortisol, which is a stress chemical. Now we need certain cortisol spikes throughout the course of 24 hour clock, right? That natural cortisol increase and decrease during the morning is a circadian signal to the rest of my body that the day has started. However, what we see happening is that in response to stressors, we can continue to get cortisol spikes throughout the day. And if we have sustained cortisol spikes that are not related to our nice circadian signaling of cortisol, those sustained cortisol spikes actually can start to create some stress-induced damage in the brain. And what we know is that BDNF actually makes the, the brain cells, the brain itself more resilient to these what are called glucocorticoid induced stressors um, or cortisol induced stressors. And so that's why we would want, when we expose ourselves to cold, we be literally become more stress resilient in the brain. We become more stress resilient in the entire body as well through a process called hormesis, not the focus of this particular video, but by exposing ourselves to these, these cold therapies or these uh, appropriate cold exposures, we also just become more, res uh, more resilient in general through a process called hormesis. Um, in, in conjunction with these, the, what I've talked about with norepinephrine and with BDNF, when we expose our body to cold, we also increase dopamine levels in the brain. Now, what, what can that be? Well, that actually increases motivation. It increases the drive to keep going, to learn something new. It increases um, focus and pleasure as well. And so we can actually, and it increases something called executive function in the brain. Meaning if we have the tendency towards kind of being a little bit spacey when it comes to what we need to do, the X, Y's and Z's we need to do to get a project done, we can improve our ability to focus on all of the steps that are needed to accomplish a task or a project by improving um, dopamine levels and executive function in the brain. And that's exactly what cold exposures can do. So listen, cold exposure is something that I used to be afraid of. I used to hate the cold. 
I just wanted winter to get over with, right? And now I love the process of preparing my body and my brain for winter using appropriate cold exposures. I will teach all about the nuance in how we can use cold in various ways um, in my prep, uh, my upcoming prep for winter challenge. So that is an, an entire video dedicated literally to how we can expose our body to the cold to not only prep for winter so that we can actually warm ourselves up in the winter using our own body heat. That's a whole thing. But also in the process of prepping for that cold and then getting continual cold exposures in the winter, we, we derive all of these beautiful brain health benefits as well. So I hope this encourages you to think about cold in a different way. It might, yes, it may sound a little scary at first, but when you know how to do it, you derive so many healthy brain benefits from it.